Good afternoon, and welcome to the Glendale Arts and Cultural Commission meeting on December 21st, where we have a roll call, please. Commissioners Derhal Van Essien. Here. Sahakian. Here. Sharikian. Yes. Vidor. Here. Chairperson Oshigan. Yes. The agenda for the December 21st meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall on December 15th, 2017. Item two, yes. consent items. At 2A, approval of regular meeting minutes from November 16, 2017. Do we have any comments or uh, revisions? I'll move approval. I mm -hmm. second it. Thank you. Can we have a roll call? Commissioners of Derho Yes. Sahakian. Yes. Shurikian. Yes. Vidor. Yes. Chairper <laughs> Chairperson Oshigan. Yes. Item three, introductions and presentations. At 3A, library arts and culture events presented by Chuck Weick, Community Relations Manager. Good afternoon, Chair Oshigan, commissioners, city staff, and visitors. Uh, I'll give you a brief report of the goings on at the library. Of course, we're winding down uh, what has been a very successful year with the reopening of the downtown central library. Uh, so I'll highlight some of our upcoming events. In our reflect space, we have uh, a new exhibition uh, titled I Am, Narratives of the Holocaust. Uh, that runs through January 17th. Uh, it, it is stunning. Uh, if you go down there and look, it's, it's really a, a great uh, installation. We work with the Los Angeles Museum of the Holocaust. Um, and we have a number of events coming up in January, Wednesday, January 10th at 7 p.m. in our Central Library Auditorium, we have a film called Forget Me Not. Uh, this is Heather Connell's documentary film that looks at the persecution and subsequent death of the five million non-Jewish victims of the World War II Holocaust and the lives of those who survived. Uh, there will be a discussion with Ms. Connell following the screening. Um, uh, we're really looking forward to that. It looks like a good Stephen Ross uh, is coming to us kind of through the Friends of the Library and their author events. His book titled Hitler in Los Angeles, How Jews Foiled Nazi Plots Against Hollywood and America is a chilling little known story of a Jewish spy ring in Los Angeles that operated from 1933 to the end of World War II, uh, fighting the rise of Nazism in the United States. Uh, again, this is sponsored by the Friends of the Library. Um, we will have a reception for uh, the author Stephen Ross at 6 p.m. on January 17th in Reflect Space, and then at 7 p.m., uh, Dr. Ross will speak in the auditorium. Uh, this is, let's see if I can get this right, Lado Vido. Uh, that's Sunday, January 21, 3 p.m. We're going to break the bread. We're, we're talking about Jewish shala and, and choreg. Thank you, choreg. <laughs> Armenian choreg. Uh, Armenian yeah. choreg. Uh, uh, traditionally, it's it's a unique program that connects uh, people and families with Holocaust survivors, uh, where you literally are kneading bread, making it, braiding it, and then eating it. Uh, and we're going to do this at the Reflect Space, and this is. Uh, this will be the final program uh, for the IM uh, exhibition. So we're really happy with this. Again, uh, Los Angeles Museum of the Holocaust brought that to us. Uh, Brand Library's one year, The Art of Politics in Los Angeles. Uh, the opening <coughs> reception was back in November. The final uh, uh, talk is gonna be on January 7th, 2018, where there will be an artist talk. On Sunday afternoon, January 7th, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. at Brand Library. Uh, just to give you a heads up, the 222 East programs that we did all last summer uh, moved to what is called the Central Park Paseo. So that's the little Paseo next to Mona, the Museum of Neon Art. Uh, we had our first uh, in December, on December 9th, on the Saturday. Uh, we pulled the Friends of the Library out there for a book sale. They did really well, sold a lot of books. Uh, uh, and our staff and some of our, our uh, administrators were out there 
uh, just seeing how we can connect even more library programming or friends programming to this outdoor affair. We had two good bands and we had a poet in between. Uh, we're going to keep that rolling uh, through June, same place in the Paseo, on a variety of Saturday afternoons. Um, but I think, I think this may have solved some of our, our concerns uh, uh, about getting people to these concerts about and really connecting that program with the library programming to, to make much more of it than just a concert. So you are indeed, uh, you'll have the dates, but you're certainly welcome to come out and greet the people out there. Uh, again, that's, we'll start again January 27th. Uh, uh, we've got a couple of, of good bands and a poet. Uh, it'll be fun. Uh, and that's about it for my library report, just very brief. Uh, again, we had a very successful year. Uh, some of it, indeed, we need to thank the commission for uh, providing performers and funding for these performers throughout the year. We had a great, great season at Brand Library that will continue again uh, in June. Uh, the 222 East will keep going and then we'll see what else we can do. Thank you, Chuck. Mm -hmm. Any questions, additions? Next item. Item four, oral communications. There is none. Item five, business agenda at 5A. Discussion item at 5A1, ACC project update. The word on the street, Scott Froshauer. Uh, how art happened to you? Uh, uh, the artist, Scott Froshauer, unfortunately couldn't be here today. He is a working artist and he got work. Uh, so uh, he sent me his, his, uh, his uh, regrets, um, but he just wanted to kind of give you a report about his, his thoughts on uh, the Word on the Street project. Uh, that's one of the parks. That might be Montrose. That could be Infinity Sign. So there's, there's 20 of these uh, in a variety of parks. Uh, around the city. Um, first slide is press. His comments were the response from the press has been outstanding from the LA Times to all three major television networks and numerous other outlets. Uh, community feedback, the project has had an overwhelming level of connection with the community through social media uh, from Facebook posts and mentions on nextdoor.com to a glowing Yelp review of one park because of the sign installed there, the response has been broad and very positive. Uh, if one platform stands out, it is Instagram. Uh, you will hear more of that, I'm sure, in 2018 uh, about Instagram. By checking the location tags for each park involved in the project, I see that Scott sees new postings almost daily of people interacting with the installations and sharing their experience with the world. Uh, looking forward, uh, he and I are working on a guided tour of the pieces. Uh, uh, we're looking to find what they call a party bus, so not a big school bus, but a smaller bus uh, to showcase the exhibits. And maybe we can look at some of the uh, uh, utility box murals at the same time. Uh, thinking about the future, this is again Scott. I would be interested in proposing a way to freshen up the project after it concludes next November by offering to keep the existing posts in place but changing the slot signs on them. The approval process from the Parks Department should be very streamlined for this proposal. Well, we'll see. Uh, he's very happy. Um, and he says thank you. So again, he, he regrets not being able to be here. Um, I think that's excellent, Chuck. Um, I mean, it, it's, I can't remember the last time we had so much press on an exhibition or when it's in public art installation that we did. And I think we should really find ways in which to capitalize on this, you know, use it to be a platform so that we bring in other artists who then potentially can have this kind of exposure because this is what artists really crave is this kind of exposure that he got. 
So I think the party bus is a really, really good idea. <laughs> uh, you can have a party on the bus while it's going around. And then um, if we have any other suggestions in how we can uh, capitalize on this, I think it's really important. Well, uh, Chuck, just wanted to add, I mean, first, it's, it's a great project, and it's, it's been nice to actually sit back just as a community member and kind of see how viral it's been, and slowly certain friends are starting to ask questions about how did this get here and how great it is. But what is the current timeline for how long the signs should be up? Uh, these current signs will be up through early November 2018. That's a full right. calendar year. Great, because you know, we've been talking about doing different public commission events to talk about what we do, so it'd be great to have them there as a guest, and maybe that could tie into a tour. Um, but I think that would be a great way to get people to show up and uh, hear about public art in Glendale. Yeah, at the, the very least, we should fold some of the press that he's got into our public art, um, presentations on public art, master plan, and things like that, at the very least, yeah. The potential, it's about potential, I feel. You know, this is one one thing, and then there's, there should be 50 more like this in Glendale. I was really delighted to be on my periodic hike up the Brand Trail in back of the Brand Library and proceeded a ways up, and really where the trail kicks in, there's a start sign, and it was so much fun to just come upon that. You know, it's, it's isolated, it's in the back, and there you are, and it says start, and you're looking up at the antenna, and it just made me laugh. It made me smile. So <laughs> that was a surprise. Didn't know that was there. Well, we also have comments here from uh, community member Sharon Weissman. May I invite you to the podium? To Please. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry I didn't know the procedures and there were no cards in the back. No worries. We don't know the procedures either. So. <laughs> and yes, I'm Sharon Weissman from Far North Glendale. And um, I am also a docent along with uh, Roberta Medford, who's in the audience, and my husband at the Casa Adobe de San Rafael. And we were absolutely delighted to find uh, one of the signs, a, a peace sign. And I don't know how it was uh, decided what signs went where. But we are absolutely delighted that the three of us who are the main docents and also uh, demonstrate for peace at Ocean View and Honolulu every Friday, uh, Roberta since 2006, and my husband and I were formerly with the Glendale Peace Vigil starting in 2002. So um, we, we find this sign absolutely perfect. And the only downside, I thought, was when I read that they're only going to be there a year. I, I would like to see that particular one in our Casa Park. Um, I don't want to be greedy and say forever, but <laughs> perhaps until be greedy, until please, there, please be it, greedy. It, it yeah. is peace in the world, perhaps <laughs> only until then. Oh, that's for, uh, and also, it, it's I noticed our, that sign has a little damage down um, where little fingers have apparently been touching peace, and I think that's charming and wonderful, also but it needs a little repair. And we all are, uh, with Glendale Beautiful, the nonprofit that uh, hosts the open houses for the CASA, um, Sundays, one to, the first Sunday of the month, one to three, and every Sunday in uh, July and August, if anybody wants to visit it and you know, take your picture with the sign, well, you know, we'll, we'll open the CASA. And if you do end up with a, uh, a, a tour bus, uh, contact Glendale Beautiful. We'll be happy to open the CASA and you know, if anybody want, hasn't had a chance to see the historic building. And um, I also love the one in Duke Majin, and I think they're lovely. And I don't, I don't want to, again, not share. The other casa actually might have, was also appropriate for a peace sign. That's where uh, the Oak of Peace used to be and the uh, Treaty of Coanga that, that uh, solved the uh, Mexican-American War and, and ended up with California becoming part of the United States was negotiated in that park. So that's also very peaceful uh, atmosphere, both small parks. So again, thank you very much for this installation. I think it's wonderful. And I hope it uh, can stay longer. And if there's a maintenance issue, please contact Glendale Beautiful. We'd be interested in helping fund that if that, if that would make it easier to keep that particular sign. But we do understand sharing them with other other parks and places too. Anyway, thank you. 
Thank you. Yes. Uh, why do we have a timeline? What's wrong by keeping them? And because we have so much space. I mean, we have so many different locations. Why can't we keep them as is, as the original idea, the starters? And then in the future, whoever else wants to add them, they can. Uh, Chair Oshkan, Commissioner Derhovanesian, uh, this went originally through the Parks Commission. So some, uh, we may have to go back and look at our notes for that and why it was just given a year. Uh, I don't want to speculate, but if everybody likes it, maybe you'll, yeah. they'll want to keep it up a little longer, but we'll, we we'll could, have to ask. We could request parks and say sure. that, you know, if there is a special restriction legally, we can understand that. If not, it is, it's something that makes people think and smile and it gives a kind of a, arouses some kind of an emotion, why not? Request that as commissions. Volition. All right. Well, we can actually work on that during the year. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, suggestions? We'll certainly take your suggestions back to the artist, and I'm sure you can work with him. Okay. Next item. Item 5B, action item at 5B1, motion approving artwork for 101 North Brand Boulevard project. Chair Oshigan, commissioners, city staff, and, and guests, uh, staff is recommending that the commission adopt a motion recommending approval of Chromophone, a public art installation by ESI Design at 101 North Brand Boulevard. To summarize your, your packets, uh, the owners of 101 North Brand Boulevard are proposing a public art piece for the outdoor plaza. Uh, this is designed by New York-based designers ESI Design, and the proposal is for a chromophone, which is a state-of-the-art interactive non-commercial media display that allows individuals to use a touch-sensitive console by the existing fountain to create abstract visuals and audio effects on a clock tower facing the plaza. Uh, the Glendale Urban Art Program establishes the requirements and procedures for providing public art in conjunction with new developments. Uh, this this uh, uh, is a little different, um, uh, uh, but, but nevertheless, uh, uh, this is artwork that would uh, still be maintained by the by the developer uh, and, and kept up. Uh, developers, let me see, the, we've got, uh, the, because the project is not, uh, strictly speaking, affiliated with a design review application, um, it's not a new construction or 10,000 plus square feet, um, the design review authority will be the community development department director. Uh, so you were making, that recommendation uh, to the director. Um, per the Urban Art Program guidelines, the commission can consider how the artwork will enhance the development of the plaza renovation project, complement the existing art program at the site, and engage public viewing and comments. The design details are at the discretion of the developer, assuming they meet the above uh, criteria that I listed. Uh, ESI Design was founded by Edwin, Dr. Edwin Schlossberg, a renowned American artist, author, and designer. Um, staff has reviewed the chromophone proposal uh, with the city planning staff and has determined that the proposal meets the intent and goals of the urban art program and that the proposed state-of-the-art interactive non-commercial media display will indeed enhance the development of the plaza renovation project, complement the existing plaza features and architecture on site, provide a unique focal point along one of the city's main signature streets, and engage public viewing and comments. Uh, staff again recommends that upon consideration of the submitted urban art program application and the present presentation today, uh, a public art installation by ESI and Chromophone uh, to be located at the public plaza at 101 North Brand Boulevard that the Arts and Culture Commission recommend that the applicable design review authority approve the public art proposal. And we have a number of guests today, including, uh, we will start out with uh, Vilia Zemataitis. She is a senior planner for the city of Glendale. Uh, Chairman Oshagan, 
the commissioners. A uh, pleasure to stand here before you. My name is Vilia Samaitaitis. I'm with the City of Glendale, obviously, Planning Department. And I typically go before Planning Commission and Design Review. In this case, it's a pleasure to come before the Arts and Culture Commission. Um, as Mr. Wyke uh, summarized everything, essentially, what I was going to say is this is a public art piece. Um, it was proposed originally in conjunction with an update to the project sign program. And again, this is at 101 North Brand Boulevard. Uh, if you'll know that it's a high rise that also has CPK, Islands Restaurant, uh, Calif uh, Olive Garden, and a number of other dining establishments. It's located on a major arterial major intersection in the city at the corner of Broadway and Brand, and they are proposing to update their public plaza, update their signage, and as part of that package, they proposed this public art piece, which you see before you today. This public art piece, and again, um, it's part of the public, it's under the public art program, and as such, must be reviewed by the Arts and Culture Commission for a recommendation by you to the appropriate design review authority. This is a voluntary public art piece. Typically, we will have public art proposed in conjunction with new developments, and those would be brought before you for recommendation to city council, ultimately, who is the design review authority for new buildings and new developments in the downtown corridor. This is a completely voluntary public art piece. They are proposing it um, without any other type of new construction and whatnot. And so in this case, they are having the development obviously on site, which public art per the program guidelines can either be a fund that the payment of which is 1% for arts into the public art fund or 2% on site. So in this case, they are, this is the primary uh, proposal of, I would like to turn uh, the rest of the presentation over to Donna Strumso, who has been wonderful to work with, with regards to the updating of the plaza and the sign program and the public art piece. And she will also then be making the introductions for the representatives of the New York-based ESI designs. Um, could I ask a question, Chairperson? Yes, of course. Um, the funding would be from the one or two percent for art. There is going to that fund is going to be used, or this is just a voluntary thing that uh, they want to put it for enjoyment of the community. This, this is purely on their behalf uh, to propose a public art piece for the enjoyment of the community. Um, and, and the fund would be used for that. No, they are not using any of the so art this, fund. Good. This is all private. Privately funded. Sounds good. So far, sounds good. <laughs> uh, I'm Donna Strumso. I'm the owner's representative. The um, representatives from ESI flew out this morning from New York to meet with all of you and answer any questions. Um, and they'll also show the video. I think this piece will really enhance the public art program of the city. And it's a fun piece. And I think it'll get a lot of coverage because they are so well known across the country. Dustin, who's the project manager, and Chris, who's the lead designer. And they'll talk to you and they'll answer any questions you have about it. Hi. Oh. Welcome. Welcome. We've come a long way. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, we landed at 11.30, went to the hotel and came straight to the office. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. So we're very excited about this project, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the ESI design and the projects we do, and then show the video and more about what this specific project is going to be and how we think it will enhance the plaza and be a great thing for the city of Glendale. So mm -hmm. let Chris talk. And feel free to ask any questions about the particulars of how it works or anything like that, what it would look like from any angle and that sort of thing. Um, so ESI Design, uh, the company we work for, is uh, a 40-year-old company. It's started by our, our boss, Edwin Schlossberg, in New York City. Um, it has a kind of a reputation for doing a number of different kinds of work. Um, some of that work is uh, that we've done recently, actually, is large-scale kind of media 
um, displays, um, and we've done a number of those displays around the country. Um, <coughs> uh, ESI started as a, as a museum design firm, um, doing children's museums, actually. Um, and so recently, it's been branching out into more like public artworks like this. Um, so we just completed a project in Denver, which um, had a large-scale media display in the Wells Fargo Center. Um, it was the, one of the tallest buildings in Denver, shaped like a cash register. If you've ever been in Denver, you might see it. Uh, but we did a large-scale kind of artistic display of high-resolution LED panels there, um, which are, are inside a lobby, but it's completely enclosed in glass, so it's visible around the thing. So it's all procedurally generated media in that, in that particular piece. And then we also just completed a project um, at the Columbia Center in um, Seattle, which is a large uh, crown lighting installation at the top of the three towers. And uh, I just mentioned that project in particular because it's um, a large public display. It can be seen throughout the whole city, and it's also very responsive to the environment of the city. It changes color um, like a clock. It gives a, a chime moment like that, and it also can display different seasonal color patterns and, and um, can also do things that relate to events in the city. Um, so that's a brief overview of ESI Design's recent work. Yeah, most of what we do is, is very interactive and reactive and we use a lot of media, which is kind of what you'll see in this video, what we're proposing here. So it engages the public in the piece. So maybe, I don't know if we want to, you guys know the project pretty well. Uh, and the location, I think. I don't know if we want to set this up or all or just sure. I mean, sort of talk through it. I mean, this is um, a really public-facing plaza, um, and the building itself is uh, somewhat dated, and it's part of our kind of revitalization effort for this building. Um, there is traffic here, like, throughout the day and at night through all the restaurant traffic, and people really like hanging out in this plaza, so we're really trying to spruce up the plaza in addition to doing this one um, media element here. So what we're proposing for this plaza is really um, to change the fountain that's there, which is a popular place for people to hang out, especially when it's hot out, um, by building a console arrangement over top of two existing planters, which will house um, a musical instrument that we're calling the chromophone. So it has two components. It has the actual part that you touch, that you play, and then it has um, the display so the display has two parts. It has, like you see at the top, a, a kind of a clock tower element. Um, we're really thinking of this as really like a public square kind of environment. So this, this clock element will be combined with um, this chromophone, this musical visual instrument. Um, so it has several modes that you'll see in the video that it can do. Um, one is the elemental sampler, and the second mode is the um, waterfall sequencer. Um, so the sampler, the way it works is you touch parts of these five pylons that are here, and each pylon corresponds to one musical instrument. So these are um, sounds that we've developed, we've generated, sounds that are designed to not really feel, you know, technological or like imitating instruments, to, but to be somewhere kind of in between. Uh, the idea being that they are very pleasant sounding, and everything is uh, arranged on a pentatonic scale, so that anybody who plays this instrument, whether they're you know a professional musician to like a three-year-old kid, you know it'll still sound pleasant no matter who's interacting with it. So you'll touch an element here, and then you'll see a reaction up on the big pylon. So it's a really fun way to like see an instant kind of connection between the sounds that you're hearing, what you're doing with your hands, and the way you collaborate with other people as you're playing this instrument. So maybe we should uh, play. I don't know if you guys have sound enabled. So you're seeing one touch and then another touch point. So in this case, all of the visuals that we were designed are really designed to like feel a little bit like what if the sound sounds like, a little bit of a synesthesia kind of element. And then also to kind of reflect the different uh, aspects of the environment in Los Angeles. And this is the second, uh, the second kind of program, and they'll alternate. It'll be like one hour of one and then one hour of the next. And this instrument that you play a little bit differently than the first one. This is a, a, a sequencer. Um, 
so it's more like a toggle switch. So what you'll do is you'll push a button and then that will be enabled. So I don't know if you ever used a, a drum machine or something like that. It's a, it's a repeating loop of sounds. So both elements, both kind of, both kind of media stories we feel like will be really fun to play collaboratively on this, on this new platform we're building. And also should be really cool to look at too, even if you're just in the plaza. Uh, question. Uh, the sound, would it kind of be disruptive if people are there and they want to enjoy chatting with each other? or Because they are not sitting in an amphitheater with chairs to you know, right, right. watch that. So uh, how, how does the sound? It's all interesting, very exciting. It's just I thought if people go there to sit and chat with each other or have a cup of coffee or whatever, how does the sound impact them? So we, that's definitely something we've considered from the, from the start. So there's actually two sound elements in the piece. Up on the piece itself, there's this uh, disc-shaped speaker up there, which has a very kind of um, customizable envelope of sound projection. And so our goal is really to keep the sound localized um, at the console itself with that. And additionally, each pylon will have its own miniature speaker in it so that while you're standing there, you'll be able to hear it right down here as well. So we'll be able to tune both of those two arrays of speakers to really make the sound work really well for this space and, and avoid any like uh, unpleasant echoes or you know, projecting too far away from the plaza where it might be disruptive. So we can also think of the sound too as, as really like a, like a chime element that you hear, like almost like you would hear bells ringing at a clock tower like on the hour or something like that. So we're going to, in the production phase, hopefully work very closely with uh, all the environment around there, test it out in multiple locations as we're developing the sound kind of envelope for these pieces. So the, the idea is not to have sound happening, unless somebody would uh, go to the five <coughs> pylons, but would, would this activate itself and run audibly no. at any other <clears throat> time, only when people use only it? Only when people are okay. using it, no. with the exception of the chime moment. And there will be a, a media program that's playing on the, the lights that you see up on the piece will be right. playing. And then when you come to play the chromophone, it, it no, will interrupt it'll that medium. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You'll interact. The only um, <clears throat> type of display I'm familiar with, because I'm, I'm from Chicago, is the, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Millennium Park, but in Millennium Park, there's, there are these big, I think they're 70 foot tall, displays like that, and the resolution, I mean, they happen to be displaying faces, so it's right. a different type of thing, but the resolution is very, very fine, and it's very pleasant to look at, and then you have, you know, like, I think of, well, you have Times Square, which is probably as bad as it gets, and there was, there used to be a theater, um, and I think it's closed down now, that had a very big type of LED display, which was sort of in, evocative of Las Vegas, and then there's the more fine-tuned. So, you know, where would you place this in terms of the resolution of the light being emitted? So this actually has like a, an uneven resolution to it. So in the horizontal format, we're using a technology which is uh, an LED tube. And so vertically, the resolution is 10 millimeters, and then across the whole space of the thing, we have 32 pixels wide. So it's a fairly low resolution Piece, but we've really designed it with the kind of technology in mind to make the technology itself look good, whether it's on or it's off. And so what we're doing is we're actually using a gray diffuser over this LED. And so that, um, to really answer your question, um, it's, it's, a, it's a medium resolution piece. It's not high res like a billboard. That was not our design intent at all. We really try to make pieces like this, these, these low resolution pieces, really feel like a, a piece of architecture almost, okay. really feel more like a, a part of the building in a way. Yeah, it's a full color spectrum, but you would not be able to see faces De on details. it. Details, yeah. yeah. It does, yeah. it's not right. the and resolution you that you see right. in Chicago right. at all. Right. In fact, a lot of the media that we were designing, like the waterfall and like water droplets and things like that were really designed to look good on this. Display also, you want to display and not interrupt with the traffic. Cars are driving, right. you won't have anything that's too glaring that's Got it. Distracting. distracting. Thank you for the clarification because that's very important. You know, we don't want that to cause any kind of accident. So let me quest, 
ask the same thing. So it's going to chime uh, on the clock, and then otherwise, if somebody touches, then it starts. Okay, that sounds sounds interesting. And we'll have different programs too for different times of day. For instance, if during the daytime, it'll be like maybe slightly louder than at nighttime, where it, the traffic is you know less busy. And so, so it'll all be tuned, you know, after the fact during the installation and production process. And would there be any modification after a time, or this is going to be ongoing forever after, or how does it work? Is well, there a timeline? Uh, I think that's up to the, the developer. Uh, at the moment, we're going to have two modes. If this is very popular and they want to develop it in six months or a year from now and do new modes and new sounds, we'd certainly love to keep this going and change it you know, every year. If it's a new kind of look and feel, that would be great. Very interesting. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for the, the concept coming up to City of Glendale. I did some research on YouTube to find out if there are any other uh, public and uh, especially media electrical panels. The one that I found was the Boston Children's Hospital, which had a great indoor panel lookalike and uh, some other airport in Asia. Um, and they're very interesting, and they are a lot more advanced than what I see today. Um, and uh, I also want to thank you for the concept of the coloring that you came up with, those red or pink. Um, I drive around that area, and I live close by, and the signage is okay until now, when, but when you have yellow and pink or reddish color, they pop out and they stand out, <coughs> and it's easier to see. Um, the signage regarding what refers to the restaurants, you had another on page, I think, if I'm not mistaken, 16 or so on uh, second presentation. You had the signage, which was very nice, uh, molded in with other uh, signs. Um, although the other signs and everything else is very cosmetic, nothing pure art, except this panel. And uh, until now, what I've seen and what I've seen from your presentation and did some research on it, the technology behind this, it looks to me more 80s. There are a lot more 3D technology right now. There are a lot more interaction technology out there. Once this thing is installed, are there any means to advance the programming? Because down the line, a kid, I would bet you within 10 minutes, He's going to get bored. I might not, but a 10-year-old 10, 10 boy will get bored. So what my, my challenge is this, a, one of the questions. Yes, it looks great. The lighting, everything is fine. But how far can we go with it in the next phase? Can we change the technology of programming-wise? Then we have yearly or bi-yearly or six months or whatever that uh, time period is. That's one. Um, have you done something like this in another city? And if you did, can we see a display of it or, or video of it so we can compare? Uh, my comparison is to another system, like I said, Children's Hospital of Boston, but it's not this. It's different, completely different. So those are the two uh, basic questions. Other than that, when I went through the package that you guys presented, it's beautiful. <laughs> you guys had so much information in there with the technical, each lamp, each wire. Uh, it's, it's beyond our, I mean, it, you guys did excellent presentation. And uh, especially one of the views that I've seen was on page four on the third presentation uh, document where you had a sky view, which most of us will not see that sky view because it will be street level. And the sky view will be across the street if another high rise building can look at that. Uh, still, they're all beautiful. I'm not uh, disagreeing. Or, but those are opinions that I am, uh, I've noticed while I was going over your uh, paperwork. Um, so therefore, uh, the other thing was also, now the building, this board, it faces north. And the sunset is northwest, almost northwest. Will the sun affect? on the display, a specific time in the afternoons, for example, three hours? The, there's the building, part of the plaza where it curves. It blocks. That blocks it. So 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, one, the, the, yeah. one of the reasons we chose yeah. this location for a piece like this was because it was facing north and shaded most of the time by okay. the building. Great. Itself. Okay. All right. That's if it had faced <clears throat> south, then it would be washed out yes. in the morning from the sun. And if exactly. the building wasn't there, it would be washed out in the late <coughs> um, The Children's Hospital, a lot of more advanced work has been done with the LEDs, et cetera, but those are interiors. Yes, in fact, we do yeah. have another project going on now, which has not been completed yet. Right. It, we have approved it three years ago or yes. so on the corner of Central and California. There's a condominium unit, mm -hmm. and we have approved something similar to this, but it's based on uh, sensors and not controllers. Mm -hmm. As you enter the building, the sensor will sense somebody in, and the screen will automatically go into certain mode, which is not the same technology, but it's very similar. Again, interactive uh, technology. A lot of our work does exactly that. Oh, okay. Then yeah. we're on the same page. The, okay. Because, <laughs> the concern of the owner also was that they did not want anything that was too, um, too bright or too glaring. That they're really concerned about the traffic. They okay. don't want the vehicles on brand to get I'm shot. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I definitely so, agree with you. Or have <laughs> it cause an accident because it's too. Um, sharp I mean, image and all that. To speak to your concern a little bit about the technology too, I think that um, our intention really for this was to make it look not like um, a Times Square boat board or um, we do high res media LED panels like on a lot of other projects. But for this particular case, we felt like we wanted you to go with a little bit lower res uh, media just because we felt like it was work better for the space. <clears throat> you know, we don't want this to feel like it could have advertising on it or something like that. We wanted it to really feel like, you know, it was it was really of a place and really of this building and really a unique thing too. You know, we didn't want it to see, yeah, we could have easily put LED panels in that spot, you know? Um, but this is a little bit more unique in that the the media is really designed for this for this technology and really designed for this space and this and this purpose. Um, and so to, to speak to your idea about like changing it over time and like making it feel like new and fresh, that's something we would definitely love to do. Okay. Um, and it can and be done. It can definitely be okay. done. Okay. I mean, and we don't even have to come to LA to do that. We okay. Do that from New York, <laughs> from our computer. So it's like everything is designed to be monitored from afar and, and controlled from afar as well too. So okay. updating it is going to be something we can definitely consider. Uh, one last question, if I may. Yes. Um, Anything, the facade of the building is changing, the glasses, or just there are additional, those red? So right now what we're planning for the, for the facade of the building is, is to actually just do like a paint treatment on the horizontal mullions. Okay. Um, and it, it's dark in this image, so it's hard to see, but um, we can give you renderings of what that'll look like yeah. if you want. Okay. <coughs> nothing. Nothing has changed. The glass itself. No. Okay. All right. Yeah. The building is staying yeah. put. It's just the. It's being enhanced. It's, I, exactly. It I, needs, I'm all for it. It's it needs a facelift. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. What, what is the scope of? Um, it, sorry. I. Let's go. I, no, Shant, no, please. Go no, no, please, please. No. All right. I'll. I'll. Finish this part. I'm, it's coming in pieces. What? Um, what is the scope of what we're looking at? Obviously, the, the interactive audiovisual piece, but the other elements as well. Are we looking at the tables and the umbrellas and the red um, highlights? No, we're not. Okay. Um, because there is, you know, it's kind of asking about is there any integration between the other aspects of this building enhancement project, and that's the $4 million project, I think. Um, versus just that particular piece? I mean, is there any integration or is that a completely separate thing being done on its well, own without The, the decking and the plaza um, is proposed to be redone. Just right. Yes, the out. wood and the, the, guard, some, the, the landscaping. Add some more landscaping yeah. so it looks entirely fresh. So the, the console is part of a uh, integrated thing over the fountain made with this new EPA decking, and then we're going to use that same decking in the in the benches that are around the new planters, um, and um, there's uh, and there's actually one long linear uh, bench that goes alongside that, and you know the color story of the red umbrellas will also be reflected in the media at some points too. 
The yeah. existing fountain is not changing. It's going to be resurfaced, but there's no change okay. to that. I would say all I'm of sorry. our all of our designs are a holistic design where we look at every element and see how it all works together. And we've definitely done that here with every piece of this from inside the lobby all the way out to the exterior. And including the some of the parking garage signage that we're doing. It all works together. So sorry, I'm not clear. Is it all a package deal or is it not? Um, I believe <coughs> the we're presentation just that we saw. It's, yeah. it's got the umbrellas, it's got the Graphic symbols and then plus this interactive piece is that all together? The, the art piece, the chromophone is is the interaction and and the media that you mm -hmm. see up there. The rest of it is part of the refresh of the building, which is not what we're looking at. Which is right. not what you're, we're looking we're at. Really it's part of the package, but we are not looking yeah, at that. Just so you get the context <laughs> just, of what yes, the whole project okay. is. Oh, all right. We like it. Both yeah. I actually spent a good deal of time looking at the chromophone with the rest of it yeah. and kind of trying to decide that. So that was not clear to me exactly, because you know, the package is so inclusive of everything. Right. Well, right. We, okay. we always try to make you know an yeah. immersive type environment. Yeah. So designing the plaza to be a little bit more a nice place to hang out as part of the whole design. Now, one of the things that, I, for instance, I would have been interested in and would have asked for would be to see the materials that, for instance, the umbrellas and the tables and the signs on the parking are made of just to understand what they're really going to look and feel like and how, you know, rich and elegant they are versus, let's say, you know, a banner or something. Right. Well, I, I don't think that's what we're looking at today, but we're happy to share it with you if you'd like to just see it to well, know what's that's going not, on there. If that's not our purview, then yeah, okay. not necessary. Please. Uh, well, I just want to say I'm, I'm really excited to see this. Um, I think as we've been developing our public art master plan, we've been talking about how we want most of it to be focused kind of on the large scale projects to be in the downtown where it's more appropriate, but then have more smaller scale projects that are more neighborhood appropriate. Uh, like we have Adams Square Mini Park has um, uh, public art there that's very good for the neighborhood, but not something that necessarily would go in downtown. Um, so I, I'm as a lifelong resident, I've, I've grown up, you know, in this plaza a lot and it's uh, as you guys said, it's 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 frequented often, but there hasn't been much to do in that area. Uh, so I'm excited to see this. Um, and I think the interactive features are great. I think it's a perfect place for interactive art. Um, just curious in terms of kind of the reprogramming. So let's say five, ten years from now, um, the actual screen technology and the panels don't have to necessarily get upgraded, but you guys can do that as a, like a platform changes are possible or... I mean, the media is the easiest thing to change, which we can do at any time. Um, the technology itself is probably not something that we would change, but it's something we would plan for. We would plan for media changes in the the way the look of the the lighting in the console and on the piece. Great. And then, in terms of uh, how many individual consoles are there? That five, five different. Okay. Great. I think it's excellent upgrade for the plaza. I can say a couple of things. So I'm, I'm really also very excited about this. I think it'll be, if I'm not mistaken, the first interactive public art piece in the city of Glendale. The second. Is that right? The second? I believe. Okay. It's still good if it's the second. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about at this scale? I believe it will be the first. So I'm personally very excited because I'm very much into technology art, and I really, a lot of the direction that uh, we're going to take, I think, with the public art master plan is to go technology related art. So it's really, really great that this is happening here in Glendale. Uh, I think it will be great for the city. I mean, because yes. technologically, I mean, it's, it's, it'll be exciting. Yes, yes, very much so. I'm very excited to have a, It'll be surprising because people haven't seen such a thing at this scale in Glendale. So I think that surprise element is really important to bring people to, to start thinking about what's possible here in Glendale. And this is, I think, a great, great first, first step. So congratulations for that. Um, I want to get an idea of what happens. So during the day, so you said there's media there when somebody is not interacting with it, which is going to be most of the time, right? It's going to be <clears throat> well, at night really or in the morning. Well, no, I mean most of the time, like at you night in the morning. There, you can hang out there. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> you have your meetings there. <laughs> My kids would probably just live there if you know. That'll be fun. What is the media that's going to be there? And then a little bit more description of what you have the two different cycles what happens when somebody's interacting and how that changes. Yeah, so the media, what you're describing, we call it the idle state of the piece. 
Mm -hmm. um, and there, during uh, each of the two media programs, uh, what you'll see during the idle state is kind of like a, almost like a, a pale suggestion of what will happen when people actually start to play with it. If you if you play the video, the beginning part of it actually starts with the idle state. So like if we have let's say these triangles and swoopy shapes happening, um, this that's, is the, that's the idle state that's right the now. Idle yeah. state right there. And then when somebody starts to play with it, like the <clears throat> the big gestures start to kind of overtake the overtake the idle state on, on, on top of it. And so what you're seeing in the idle state is like a miniature version of what you see bigger and brighter later on. Um, and in this case, it's that kind of shapes passing back and forth and slowly moving across the piece. Um, for the next piece, uh, the next media state, this one is like we call this our digital waterfall in a way. So we're really that's an idle state. So we've, that's, a, that's an idle state that just waterfalls coming down. And then when you interact, this is what happens. Yeah, so it. you can almost think of this one as we, we think of it as like um, rocks in the stream kind of interrupting the water flow a little bit. So you'll see, you'll always see the waterfall going down there. It's kind of a slow, peaceful display. And then people will, will place, they'll touch the console and they'll place an element up there. And that, that element will become a sound. And, and an hour is that what it was each state? Well, is it's that, something we're gonna we're gonna we have to see kind of as we're working on the installation, and we'll, we'll see how it is. But that's kind of what we're planning right now, yeah. And so, the and the selection of the, and, okay. and and the, the shapes, selected shapes. Um, you said there's a connection with the building. Is and what, what's the what's the con concept behind so the there, shape there, selection? Yeah, they're actually um, the uh, the idea is that they're like a little bit of a reflection of the environment of of Los Angeles in a very abstract way. Maybe the triangle is like a mountain shape, the, the swoop is like this, you know, the Santa Ana winds or the, a water flow or a Fire, you, know, you have a fire surf. symbol in there. <laughs> Hopefully you can turn that down. But, you know, um, and we, like- We don't the, like fires. <laughs> <laughs> no fires, thank you. You know, a, kind of, a little bit of an abstraction of the kind of, the, the, the characteristics of the environment of, of, of Glendale and Los Angeles as a whole. So that was the inspiration for those shapes and, and forms. But the shapes will also kind of fit the tones you hear, like a, a higher tone versus a lower tone will have different shapes associated with them that'll kind of match what you're hearing in a way. So um, if somebody really got into it, I'm envisioning, let's say, um, dancers or musicians who play instruments want to um, you know, jam with this thing, or we want to have a performance that underpins this thing, that, that somebody could um, play it and produce um, a piece, whether it's improvised or not, uh, that would last a long time and somebody could perform to it um, just by running between those five pylons and creating unique combinations of things. Yep, this is, this is yeah. some, something we actually considered when we were working on the design of it. Um, like the fact that what we're creating here with this platform with the fountain is, does have a stage-like quality to it. Um, for the whole plaza. Um, that's one thing that we, I think, is like a day two kind of move where we would, you know, we would see how people interact with it and see if that's something that we wanted to add to the media program later. Are you hiring? <laughs> <laughs> we certainly. So why do you, do you dance? So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've seen like there are kids people always dancing. playing around here in the fountain. Like, I, I can see when the music's being played, kids are going to be dancing around to it. So if you have somebody playing who really is a musician, they'll be able to play songs mm -hmm. that maybe the kids recognize mm -hmm. and will dance around to it. Mm -hmm. And you could keep going with that to actually having a performance. Or mm -hmm. You could have five musicians playing at the same time. Certainly, like a band yeah, exactly. Would be a are you all musicians? I, I think that would be great. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Mr. White is as our musician. <laughs> Was that possible, Chuck? You want to be the first one who plays it? Sure, love yeah. to. <laughs> I think the hope of the developer is when it opens, to have an opening event and have a musicians mm -hmm. or a musician actually playing this mm -hmm. to really launch this as something mm -hmm. exciting. For and really, really showcase what it's capable of. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a great idea. You know, I do believe that it is going to be very exciting and because it's interactive. The rest images, you know, we all have different tastes and, you know, it's an acquired thing. But the fact that people can be part of it and they can manipulate it, I think it's the most important. It would gather a lot of people and I think um, the building owner and the developers have done a good job because it would be a great... Uh, reason for people to go there and naturally then to go and eat and, and enjoy. And to stay there, yeah, to actually spend yeah. time there rather than just passing by. 
It would attract, it's a major, I think, it's a major attraction for people to go and, you know, to use their skills or to see how it works. It's a great idea. Thank you for bringing it to us, and thank you for the developers for coming with us. Um, I have one Sean? more question. Uh, oh, go ahead, please. This is a real trivial one. Um, what, what was the reason for the font style of the time of day? It does have kind of a very vintage -y retro look to it, to me, anyway. And I wondered if it was consciously selected that you display the time in that form, as opposed to a different style of a font. So that, w that was a custom created font that our media designers created for the, the, the display technology on this piece. Um, part of what we were looking at as, a, as an inspiration for the whole piece was really the kind of history of neon in the, in the area as well. Mm. Um, so there, there was a little mm. bit of that vintage so quality to it in a way. Kind of a neon-ish type yeah. of a... Mm. Well, yeah. and what you're seeing with the lines are actually, those are the, the light bars there. So that's not, it's not a screen like a oh, TV, okay. it's actually individual bars. Yeah. Right. So that's why it has sort of a little bit of that, that vintage look, but that also comes from the, the sort of neon inspiration. Can we use it as a Times Square thing for the New Year also? <laughs> because the time could show and then, you know, I suppose it could be done. Anything's possible. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's in the heart of Splendel, you know, exactly. Yeah. So the, I suppose it could be Jordan, done. Nur, the, the, you roll something down the escalator that's <laughs> over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes. you're not going to be able to see, to really see images because of the resolution, but you, you know, pictures or things like that, but you could certainly create a ball that drops yeah, Doing on. a ball drop, yeah. Doing fireworks, no problem. It's a good thing. <laughs> fireworks. Shant, yes. Um, yeah, I had a detailed question about the pillars. So the, because I know we talked about, you know, potentially you could create, kind of have musicians that use it, but um, so if you're, if there are five people simultane simultaneously using all five, will the interaction be instant for all five, the individual interactions, or does it have to wait till kind of one is done and it's, roll through? Okay. Um, so it, it is, it is um, like you can play one note on top of another note, um, and you'll see at the, on the display, you'll see that note, that visual on top of the other visual. Great, great. And the, the sequencer mode with the waterfall, it's actually location-based. So if you're on the right playing certain pieces here, those stones, if you will, are being placed where you're putting them versus the left, so they'll be on the left side. So you can actually see where you fit here up on the, the actual media. Great. Yeah, that'll be a pleasant experience to bring people together that don't know each other. Some kids can you know, <laughs> battle for being first, but it'll be great. Yeah. That's that's our that's our goal here is that you have kids do that, have people really battle back and forth, and then collaborate on things and, and make new sounds and, and music. Great. There will be controls also that someone can't turn up the sound. Mm like, and blast everybody in the city of Glendale. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be... Oh, so there's volume control can't. on the pylon? Is that... No. Oh, no. There's no volume control pre, on the pylon. No. Um, pre it'll, be, it'll be built in that no yeah. one can fiddle around with. And we will actually have, like, um, timers, too, as well, so that people won't be able to kind of, like, hog it uh, for too long if, they, if, hopefully, people want to hog it for a long time, but we'll, they'll, there'll be, a, like, a timeout over a certain, maybe it's... Um, where you'll play it, and then eventually the, it'll it'll reset itself. <clears throat> and all the infrastructure, of which there was a huge amount in here, and I really got distracted looking at all the details because I didn't understand anything, but I know that there was a lot of electrical grid and a lot of all kinds of, you know, the audio system. Is it all hidden within the framework of the tower? or oh, it's, all, it's all going back to um, uh, an 80 room inside the, right off the lobby of the, of the building. So, it's all, so there's no wires or exposed nothing infrastructure. Is, nothing at all is, should be visible or, right. or controllable outside That's besides right. the actual console that you touch. So no one will be able to hack it and put up like a, like <laughs> a scene <laughs> image or whatever? That was a big thing. Wow, I mean, yeah. I was just thinking so of the aesthetics, but you, yeah. you bring yeah, up a good point. You don't want anything um, um, bad put up there. You yeah. know? Well, you, but you'll be able to remotely control it, I suspect, but with some... Only us. Good security. Only yeah. you, right. Yes. Very, very good security, right. Yes. So, do you have something to say, Harad? Yeah, go ahead. Um, as uh, 1 to 10, and 10 being the largest or greatest, where do you fit this uh, in, as an art program, comparing to other projects that you've done? Well, 
Well, Preston said it was an 11. Yeah, I think it's an 11. <laughs> <laughs> we've done larger things than this, um, larger scale things than this. Um, we've never done anything exactly like this, though, before. So okay. This is our first sort of interactive musical piece that, that we've done in an outdoor display like That's what I want to hear. Okay. <laughs> um, when it is approved, how long does it take? When can we go and play? <laughs> So the, the hope is is sometime uh, next year, towards the, the end of the summer, the fall, somewhere in there, is will be up and be, yeah. be playable okay. by everyone. To invite family and friends. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So well, a couple, like couple of things. Yeah, go ahead, John, please, please, please. Well, I was going to make a motion of, yeah. I'll just, just have a couple, couple comments. of things, yeah. So when it does launch, I think we should definitely make sure that we make a very big deal out of it for our city, because <laughs> I think it's a very, very important piece for our city. It'll be, actually, people will think it'll be part of the public master, public art master plan, and we'll keep that our secret. That is, it is and it isn't at the same time. Um, what, the thing about, I'm very curious about the actual uh, graphics. I mean, I mean, as you go, I know, I know the process is you think about many different ideas. What were some of the other ideas that you had in terms of what kind of graphics that you could put up there? And, and the, why did you settle on, on this one finally? Well, um, if you, um, I don't know, you've probably seen the movie Fantasia, that's a you know, famous Disney movie. Um, and that, that, the way that that kind of synesthesia kind of interaction uh, between the, the orchestral sounds and like the animation visuals was like um, something that we definitely looked at to see like what is the best kind of way that you can make this relationship, this visual relationship to the sound in there. Mm -hmm. and then, because of our technology that we that we decided on for this, we wanted to make shapes that were fairly simple shapes. We we didn't want to have like you know crazy complex things that would take a long time. We wanted to keep it very kind of elemental, which is why we call it the elemental sampler. Um, and so we were really trying to think about those kind of two aspects of it. What is going to you know re reflect the kind of environment a little bit of the city? what is gonna look really nice with the sound and, and kind of speak to what the sound feels like. Um, so, and also what was gonna look good on the display. So those were, that was the kind of thinking. That, does that answer your question? Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think we're all anticipating that we're since it's, it's a revisable that, you know, and we're developing a public art program here in Glendale that, you know, other artists who come to, um, you know, do something publicly might want to, um, you know, a graphic videographer might have an idea for a design and want to update it and submit it as a proposal or something like that. So, would that be That's, possible? that's in the future, it, it, yes. I thought it is limited to them. <laughs> Are you the guys yeah, they that... would they would implement that, anything. Okay, so they could uh, submit their proposal to you and you guys would implement. Kind of. In the future. You know, First time they're thinking about that right now, probably. No, it's, just, it's just an idea. Just, just an idea. It certainly would be open to it. It's really in the yeah. hands of, of the new owners. Yes. You know. Right. Right. It's not. Okay. Any more comments? Yeah. From Who wants us? to make a motion? So I, we have a motion. I think, uh, Lucy, you can explain what's going on with the motion that we have here. Please. Yes, so th this is a little bit different than your normal packet. You have a written motion in your packet. If you've had an opportunity to review that, we would ask that you um, review that and in, in move to approve um, the motion that's in your packet. Should, should so I we read, are. Should I read it? Yes, Maybe I it should would read be it. nice if you read it. Um, so the motion is moved by commissioner, to our, our commission, seconded by commissioner, okay, first and second, that upon consideration of the submitted urban art program application and presentation of chromo for chromophone, public art installation by ESI designed to be located at the public plaza at 101 North Brand Boulevard. The Arts and Culture Commission hereby recommends that the applicable design review authority approve the public art proposal. The commission believes that the proposed state-of-the-art interactive non-commercial media display will enhance the development of the plaza renovation project, complement the existing plaza features and architecture on site, provide a unique focal point along one of the city's main signature streets and engage public viewing and comments. So I'll move so, oh. that we recommend uh, to the applicable design review authority to approve the public art proposal. I'll second it. Excellent. Can we have a roll call? Commissioner Jehovah Nessian? Yes. 
Sahakian? Yes. Sharikian? Yes. Vidor? Yes. Chairperson Oshigan? Yes, definitely. Thank, Thank you all. For, Thank you so Thank much you for coming here. a long way. Thank you, and thank you so much for the presentation. If you can't find your kids, when, once can this is built, there, yeah. you can find your kids here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have little Italy in Glendale, but we have two guys from Italy. They have very nice Italian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you All right. All right, next item, please. Item 5B2, motion approving draft public art master plan. Uh, commissioners, uh, Chair Oshigan, Commissioners, uh, in November 2015, the City Council approved the 2015-17 work plan of the Arts and Culture Commission and appropriated uh, $380,000 to accomplish activities detailed in the work plan, including uh, the, the public art master plan. We have uh, another update from uh, Barbara Goldstein. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm actually here because you made the suggestion last month that before we brought the draft recommendations <laughs> to City Council that we brought them to you for comment. And I thought that was a really good idea. Um, and so what I'm here for is to give you the really high level recommendations with a few bullet points underneath them. Um, when I go to city council, you'll be there so that you can hear what they have to say. The city council will not be getting a work plan from you or in the master plan. You will, in the, in the final draft of the master plan, have an implementation plan that looks at types of art, locations, and that kind of thing. What we're looking for from city council, however, is basically very high level. And so that's what I'm presenting to you today. And what I mean by high level is it's the key recommendations with some significant suggestions underneath them, but not the entire plan. We're not asking them to develop to approve a work plan. We're asking them to approve in principle what the main recommendations for the plan are, because we want to be able to bring them on board as the Arts Commission takes its place as a more significant commission developing a, a work plan and a framework for how the Urban Art Fund will be um, expended. So um, just to kind of go over with you where we are, um, we've had a lot of one-on-one -on -one <coughs> meetings. I've interviewed all the department heads, many of the city staff um, in departments that are going to be engaged with public art past um, city staff, present city staff, arts and cultural leaders, business leaders. Um, we've had focus group meetings both with arts people and city people. Um, we've had two advisory committee meetings, the big public meeting that you attended, and CARS has been to a number of neighborhood meetings as well as the fact that at Ciclavia we introduced the idea. So. Um, the community outreach is really kicked into gear with the placement of signs. It took a little while for cars to get the signs up. There was a very complex permitting process, but there are signs all over the city now that people can text their ideas to, the, and it goes directly to the website, their comments. Go to the website, and their comments basically tell you where they made the comment, where they saw the sign, which is great. And the signs are in, um, English, they're in Spanish, they're in Armenian, and they're in very prominent locations that are pedestrian friendly, so nobody's hopefully texting from their car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're getting a lot of information from that. So um, these are the recommendations that we've come up with based on everything that we've heard. Um, the first thing is that the public art plan is, the public art plan is basically directing the urban art program funds. and that the urban art program really should be a reflection of what the city's stated vision is for itself, which is that it's a safe and prosperous community rich in cultural offerings. So part of what that means is that the urban art fund can be used and should be used to expand opportunities for Glendalians to engage in the arts, to use the urban art fund to celebrate the diverse arts and cultural heritage that's here, 
and to engage artists in achieving the city's goals, including things like this, the Be Safe Streets goal, so that you know art can be used to help slow people down when they're driving, um, can complement the downtown strategic plan, the South Glendale strategic plan, and as it comes forward, the trolley plan, so that art can and should be infused into whatever the city does. The next recommendation has to do with your role. And I was looking at um, the, um, sorry about the quality of the photo. It came out <laughs> off of a video and we'll do something better next time. Hopefully not with you sitting around a table, maybe, you know, a, a more informal pose. Um, but in any case, it's very important that the Arts and Culture Commission be strengthened as the steward of the public art program. And I think that the last presentation that you heard is a really good reason, example of why. Things should not be coming to you as a fait accompli. You should be engaged with the planning department and projects as they come forward so that you have um, a role in helping to form them because part of what's gonna be coming out of the public art master plan is what types of art the city wants to see. And so having the, um, the, the role of the Arts and Culture Commission better defined as the stewards of the public art program and the urban art program with some teeth behind it um, means that you'll have better coordination with private percent for art projects that one of the things that has to happen with the commission is, first of all, to create more regular opportunities for you to report to city council people on the progress of the urban arts program. From the beginning, when the program is presented to them for approval, and throughout the year as projects come forward, so that they're not blindsided. The second thing is that sec the, the municipal code section that, um, <coughs> creates the commission um, doesn't actually designate the commission as the official review body for art. It basically has you acting as advocates, but it doesn't give you any real role. And I think that as we begin to look at expending the amount of money that is in the, the urban art fund, you need to have a role in actually reviewing and recommending the, the expenditure of the money. And that is not explicit in the municipal code at all. Um, the, I, I'd like to see the restructuring of the committee structure to reflect the different roles that the, that the Arts and Culture Commission has and to expand the committees to include people that are experts in the field and also people from other city departments or commissions so that if, for example, you are reviewing a piece <coughs> of work that's going to go in a park, you make sure that parks people are there that kind of thing. So um, one of the recommendations in the, the draft plan will be to restructure the commission committee structure. Um, and then the last thing is to d adopt procedures for the review and approval of art on, on public property. One of the things that came up in the public meeting that we had was question, it was, I think it was in your workshop, Ara, was questions about things that, that end up on the sidewalk, that, the, the, hollow, the, the fall decorations and the, the holiday decorations and, and what your role is. So developing procedures that talk about things that appear to be art that are on public property having to be part of your purview needs to be part of what we structure into the role of the commission. Um, and you also be, have to be looking at things like gifts of art and deaccession from the city's collection. So as an example, the project that you just saw, um, there was a project there. It's not there anymore. And there was no procedure for removing it. I'm not saying that it shouldn't have been removed. It was made out of fiberglass and, and, and foam. So it probably has deteriorated and can't be relocated someplace else. But as a matter of course, if there's an artwork that is part of the city collection, which it is, even if it's on private property, it's part of what the city has mandated, if it goes away, the commission should be involved with it. So those are the kinds of procedures that we're, we'll be developing. And the role of the, of the Arts Commission and Arts and Culture Commission is very important in that. The third recommendation has to be, do with enlivening neighborhoods in downtown with visual arts and cultural offerings. 
So um, what we're looking at there is a whole group of things that will end up being in the implementation plan, and that is thinking about how art um, supports the city's vision for economic vibrancy in the arts and entertainment district, in um, the Maryland corridor, for example, and defining what the, ba what the boundaries of that corridor are. Economic development looks at certain parts of it, and there are also cultural things happening a little bit outside of that. So, for example, the, the, um, the way that Economic Development Department defines the urban design in the Maryland Corridor doesn't include going as far as the AC Artists Live Workspace. It doesn't include the street that Tufenki and Gallery is on. So looking at what the plans are that the city has and how art could enhance those plans becomes a very important part of what the what you may be commissioning going forward is physical artwork. Um, the next thing is, impa is commissioning impactful murals and permanent artworks at key entryways to the city, whether those are overpasses or retaining walls or other, thing, other places where you're coming from one city into Glendale, another city. Um, supporting arts activities in neighborhood settings. And I think that one of the things that we'll be looking at in the plan there is the issue of cultural equity, that um, it's gonna be really important to think about commissioning art in neighborhoods that don't have it, in other words, and in neighborhoods that maybe don't have a voice in advocating for themselves. And then the last thing that I put in there, because it came up frequently during the public um, meeting was encouraging the use of color. Apparently a lot of people were complaining that there's not enough color in Glendale, so we need to figure out a way to work that in when we think about enlivening neighborhoods in downtown. So then the fourth recommendation has to do with planning art in all new projects the city builds, including parks, streets, and civic structures. This is really something that I've talked with you about before. Glendale's very unusual in that most cities that have a percent for art program start with their own buildings. Glendale didn't. Glendale started with private development. There's no requirement that art is included in anything that the city builds for itself. And as I explored that with different city departments, all of the department heads thought it was a great idea to include art in things that the city builds for itself. So um, this is something that has happened occasionally. When these buildings, when this building was built in the municipal center, there was artistic treatment of the fountain, but it's always been ad hoc. So uh, our recommendation will be to create an ordinance that designates a set aside of 1% for art in all public construction projects, and also to initiate as part of the annual work plan, um, a plan for how art will be included in new capital um, construction projects. So the next recommendation is to encourage developers to include art as a feature in new projects of all kinds. So I've been asking this question a lot because I'm really surprised that developers don't decide to spend the money on their sites like the last project that we saw did. And um, the answer that I've always gotten has been that's because it's more money to spend it on site than it is to put money into the fund. I think it's counterintuitive because when you put, integrate art into a construction project, you're making your project something special, even if you're spending more. But apparently the planning department staff tells me and others have told me that it's because of the differential in the percent that it's 2% on site, 1% to go into the in lieu fee. And I know historically from what I've heard from city council people and others that this was done specifically because the council that developed the um, Urban Art Fund wanted to create a source of funding for the arts in general, which is a good thing and there should be more money going into the arts. At the same time, if people are concerned about the beigeness of the buildings that are going in, figuring out a way to encourage developers to include art in their projects is a good idea. So this may be controversial as an idea. I think that the amount of money that is set aside in the percent for art should be the same, whether it's on-site or off-site. 
that's going to be a city council policy decision. It's also something that you, you are going to want to weigh in on. And then the question is, is it 1% across the board or is it 2% across the board? And if, it's, if it stays the same, what are ways that we can encourage developers to include art in their projects? One of the ways that we can do that, no matter what, is to create a stronger bond between the planning department and the Arts Commission staff. That right now there's no connection. If a, if, a plan, if a project comes into the planning department, they're told they have this requirement. They don't, re, they don't get sent over to art staff to talk about it. There's no, they're, they're given a set of guidelines, but there's nobody to hold their hand and encourage them to do the work. So no matter what, and this goes to one of the later recommendations, there needs to be a staff connection between arts and planning. And there needs to be, um, as well, there needs to be a connection between the Design Review Board and um, the Arts and Culture Commission. So this one, I, this is worded a little bit differently than what, you'll notice all of these recommendations are worded slightly differently than what I gave you. I tried to make them a little bit more explanatory in this. I, I think that it's, you definitely need a senior, le a, a senior level staff person to lead the implementation of the urban art program. That said, it would be really great to actually say that there is a division of library arts and culture that's called the cultural affairs division. And that people that are working in the arts, whether it's the, whether it's the galleries or whether it's the person leading the, the urban art program are all within that division and that the person that is put into that position of urban art program manager is kind of the, the glue among the various arts people. So um, I think that this is very important that, that you need to have that because otherwise you're hamstrung. You don't have the staffing that you need. We have a question out to the city attorney. It's being analyzed now to see whether um, the funding that comes in for the Urban Art Fund can be used to fund a position. I believe it can um, because those funds are set aside to, to, to use the fund and somebody has to be able to manage it. So the, the city attorney is looking at that. Um, and um, within that um, recommendation, the, the job of the person who's in that position is to lead the implementation of the urban art plan and the public art master plan to coordinate with planning department staff on public art and private development and to facilitate your work. So recommendation seven. Should we, we have comments now or should well, we let, wait? Let me go through the whole okay. thing and then you can comment yes. because then, then, then we can keep moving and, and we can always go back to the slides. Um, it's very important that, that whoever is running this program, um, implementing the program, and that, the, and that there's adequate funding, that the care and condition of public art on both public property and private development need to be monitored. It's not the city's responsibility to maintain art on private property. It's the developer's responsibility. That needs to go into the agreements with the developers. However, if the city has art on its own property, <coughs> it should be man maintained. And it's not being maintained right now. So that will be part of what goes into the, the implementation plan, including recommendations about how you do that. Um, it's going to be really important to document and conduct a condition assessment of all the art on city property and buildings. Right now, there are virtually no records, quite honestly. There should be a set of, uh, there should be a file on every artwork that the city has that's permanent, and I haven't been able to find it. We have, the most I've found has been a slideshow with photographs of art that's on city property, and that's incomplete. So the, in the first year, it's gonna be really important to actually find out what's on city property, what's the condition, what's the history of it, and, and recommendations about how to maintain it. And also to look at what's on private property and make sure that there's a full set of records of that. Um, and then to, to fund the maintenance of the work that is on city property. Um, the eighth recommendation is um, 
to employ temporary art throughout Glendale neighborhoods and downtown to test new ideas and enliven public spaces. This came up in the public meeting, the idea of testing new ideas and um, allowing temporary art to be experimental. I think the sign project that you just saw is a perfect example of that. It's a conceptual art piece. Everybody understands it, though, and it's, it's, it's terrific. Um, so to support arts programming in public buildings, including Reflex Space Gallery and the Brand Gallery, that is temporary art that, and, and should be supported. To refine the Art Happens Anywhere program as a focused neighborhood arts grant program, I think that right now Art Happens Anywhere is a great program. And it's also something that is a little bit random because it seems to be primarily a way to do artist-initiated projects. It doesn't necessarily hit the different neighborhoods. And I think that, that we should take a look at how that program is structured. Um, it should also be something that, that places art in empty storefronts. Um, I think that, that it's potentially an idea to launch a biennial temporary sculpture display program someplace like Glen Oaks Boulevard or another location location, and also to continue the utility box program, which is very popular. The ninth recommendation has to be, has to do with supporting the arts. I, I've reworded it somewhat to say, to support a strong arts culture by promoting high quality public accessible art and cultural activities. Um, once you get going, even though there's a lot of money in the fund, it's not going to be enough to do everything that people would like to see done here. So I think that over time, it's going to be very important to advocate for designating new funding sources for arts and cultural activities in Glendale. Um, to also create a formal relationship between library arts and culture department and Glendale arts so that there's more support for for promoting and marketing the arts in Glendale so that people know what's going on here, that it's a full calendar, that you know who the artists are and what activities are taking place. And because the, with the staffing that, that this city has, even if you add a staff person, you're going to need a stronger relationship with an organization whose job it is to get the word out. Um, also expand for our, uh, support for programs that engage the public in arts activities, including open studios, festivals, maybe monthly art walks, that kind of thing. And then lastly, um, to really think about um, expanding Glendale's arts infrastructure, including work that might need to be done on the Alex Theater, the planning of the Armenian Museum, Space 134, the Plaza series, all of that. There's not enough money in the Urban Arts Fund to do capital construction. However, what the Urban Arts Fund can be used for is to begin to help with the planning of those things and maybe to help leverage some of the capital construction dollars that need to be raised. The way that the Urban Art Fund was uh, municipal code was written, it did include capital construction. And that's the reason why I've included this recommendation in there, because the, the need for certain types of capital improvements and change enhancements to things like the Alex or the Plaza series have come up frequently in the public meetings that we've had. So I think it's something worth considering whether there's some element of the Urban Art Fund that can be used to help to leverage ca uh, capital construction that needs to be done for the arts. There's much more want out there than there are resources. So that's why I think it's really important that we, when we think about the Urban Art Fund, which is really what we're talking about when we talk about the Public Art Master Plan here in Glendale, that we think about how it can be used in a strategic way to get things started so that you can, over time, build additional funds, build a different, additional partnerships, and really kind of build up the arts in Glendale. It's not that the arts aren't happening. They are. It's just that so much more could happen and, and that, that so much more information could be out there about what is happening and so many more people could be engaged in it. So next steps are that um, in January, um, 
I will have a, a much more filled out draft that will include a lot more recommendations. Um, and I'll be having one-on-one -on -one council, council member meetings. Some of them are two-on-one, -on -one. they're all set up. And those will be on Monday the 22nd. On Tuesday the 23rd, there will be a city council study session, which I now understand will be broadcast and that you will all be able to attend so you can hear what city council has to say. If the one-on-one -on -one meetings are um, successful in communicating what it is that we're looking for, then when we have the council study session, perhaps we'll be able to move into some of the specifics that you were hoping for. Um, we will then have the final advisory committee meeting that evening to review the draft. Um, and on Thursday, we'll have the second public meeting to discuss the draft plan. Um, based on everything that we hear in January, I'll be going back and revising the plan based on the feedback and that will probably be the time when I really get into a lot of the procedural things and then the plan will go forward to you to recommend to city council and then for city council to adopt. So we're looking at, I would think if we really, everybody sets up the meetings, if council is able to get us on their agenda and everything, we're looking at maybe getting this completed in March, which is pretty good actually. Um, then of course you're gonna have to get into the implementation, which I won't be able to help you with, but anyway. <laughs> I, that's where we are. So I'm very happy to hear your comments and any suggestions or changes that you think we need to be including before we get to city council. Um, question. Yes. Um, basically, um, I've been called to commission with the new format that has got. Uh, the authority of the commission was based on what I have understood is that we are just the policy making part. That means we're reviewing the policies that uh, are related to art and whatever has to do in the city of Glendale with the direction of our legal advice. Uh, before we were much more in the programming, so I hope that this is whatever you're presenting to the council would be already refined in that area so it would be clear if um, we are exactly whatever is planning or whatever is being said is, is in the right format. Because what you say, I love it absolutely, and it's a must in my book. But based on what is already in place, I want to make sure that it, it, everything is according to uh, whatever needs to be done. That's let me s let me see if I understand. I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. Uh, yes, the the um, the way that the the Arts and Culture Commission is framed now in the Municipal Code has it being a policy setting body. It is not really responsible for programming. It, right. it, it has been by default, but, but it needs to be a little bit more formalized. Is that what you're saying? Because yes. that's what I think yes. has to yes, happen. Absolutely. Yeah. I've yeah. never seen an arts commission that was not in that. That's right. <laughs> doing that. <laughs> that's right. Because prior yeah. to that, we were very involved. And then our council decided and they changed the format of what the commission was, which I hope that would kind of formalize it in a way that it would be more conducive to exactly what you said. Right. Um, the second thing that I would like to ask and make sure of is that, um, well, I saw that you have a person, public art manager or et cetera. Um, I didn't exactly see here that we would have the staff or that public art manager would be one of our uh, library and art and culture uh, department that, that works with the commission. Because we need to have all the plans and et cetera are fantastic, but we are doing certain, sorry, certain part of whatever needs to be done, but it's the staff that needs to follow up and contact all the different departments and et cetera. Right, yeah, that's the purpose, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I hope that this person would be kind of the manager or the administrative person for the Art and Culture Commission that is under the jurisdiction of the library and public art, yes. um, library and art and culture department, mm -hmm. so that we would be able to work with the person and not somebody entity outside our department and the commission that is going to plan and make sure things happen. Right, no, that's absolutely what I'm recommending, yeah. Okay, so that is for the staffing because anything that is said, if we don't have the staff and there would be no follow-up, no, nothing no point, could yeah. happen. 
Yeah. That is major in our books. Yeah. The rest, I see whatever you have is fantastic. It just, uh, we hope that we would get the approval and we would go ahead with whatever needs to be done. Yeah. So two major things. One is to make sure our role is clarified as the municipal code and et cetera. And the second one is to make sure that we have the staff that takes care of all the wonderful things that you have very carefully and meticulously <laughs> have looked into and have put because it would make it really, it would make a big difference. It's essential. It happens. It's yeah. a fantastic, yeah. wholesome idea. So we hope it could be carried out. Yeah. Um, okay. I'll, I'll go ahead. Well, thank you very much, Barbara. I, when, when I read your review, I, I, a lot of things came clear to me in your discussion, but when I read the review, it prompted a lot of comments, so I kind of overdid it with the comments. No, it's and fine. I, and, well, I'm going to try to not do all the comments, that because some of them now seem maybe too much minutia, but there were a few things um, in your write-up that um, I won't, I'll, I'll give you a copy of it, okay, because good. it was, some of it was picky on wording. But there were a couple things that um, I just wanted to mention, one of them being on the issue of changing our code and kind of strengthening and codifying the role of the commission that in addition to being an official reviewing and voting body, um, that it's understood that, you know, whether it's the Urban Art Fund or specific grants, if it's public, we would be <coughs> handling both. And, you know, something on the public right-of-way, I think you already mentioned, like, you know, seasonal decorations and thematic decorations, that we would also have jurisdiction over that. Um, and then written policies, I know, in reviewing some of these uh, AHA programs, that we would have a very detailed application process so that the, the applications are consistent, because uh -huh. it seemed like there was a little yeah. latitude there. Um, and then... We absolutely agree with you on everything. The council members getting a progress and funding status um, on how we're doing with the UAF. Um, and then to also initiate development of written criteria for a list of approved artists for public art projects, if that's possible. Because I've noticed, you know, when you go on CAFE, for instance, that there are calls for people to join a certain municipality's list of artists that are oh, on you, their you, list. Is oh, you're saying create a roster? A roster, yeah. Mm. Um, then uh, on the subject of the, the, the management of the function, I guess, you know, I've been thinking about this a lot, and I'll, I'll just put it out there, and I, I don't know if it's feasible at this point, but I really think we have to rethink the library, the <coughs> the name of the Library Arts and Culture Department and really elevate into a cultural affairs department with a very senior leader uh, who has a proven background in the leadership in shepherding in and maintaining an, a municipal urban art program because all of the things we're discussing here are going to have to be not just handled by one person. There's a whole cascade of activities that really strongly imply a staff. And it seems like the library function, as well as some other functions, should be under that. So it's, you know, now it's library with arts and culture. I see cultural affairs with all of the key elements of our cultural life, including the libraries <laughs> and our cultural landmarks and our destinations and our neighborhoods being under that umbrella function. And that's a big change. And I don't know, you know, if something that massive would even, you know, whether it's a good idea or not, I don't know. But I don't know whether it would swallow very well for city council. But that's kind of what I see because it's going to be a big function. We have a lot of cultural entities, the library being one of the biggest, but not the only one. And then we have dotted line relationships we have to form with Glendale Arts and other organizations. Um, you know, there's a job description here that's pretty big. Um, working with the different functions, planning public works, uh, oversight of the art studio in the Brand Library complex certainly seems like it should fold in under that. And that would be transferring one function from one department to another. There's more. <laughs> uh, um, obviously, 
uh, we talked about assisting developers, and there has to be staff, uh, whether it's dotted line in or direct report, to realize the site-specific public art um, uh, projects that will probably develop there, as well as to coordinate relationships with Glendale's educational systems, uh, with community advocates, and with existing art organizations, as well as marketing Glendale Arts. We have big plans and big visions. We need philanthropy. So, you know, the marketing function would be something that I think a very senior person would have to direct. You know, if we're looking for big money, angels, you know, we don't have an Annenberg here. We don't have a, um, what's the other guy's name, a Broad here. But we, we're going to need that. Um, and then, uh, obviously, the, the identification and execution of acquiring other funding outside of the UAF. So that, that seems like a big, that seems like a department to me that includes these other things. And I know that's... It's a little outside my pay grade, I to know. be completely <laughs> right. honest. I know. It's outside the scope of what we were asked to do. However, the reason that I recommended not just staffing but creating a division was that's a really good way to grow something into what it may naturally become. Mm -hmm. I right. don't think you're. I don't think that what you're describing is um, wrong. I think that what that cultural affairs needs to have a much more robust staff um, presence and um, staff responsibility. I just think that it's going to be very important to grow it over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, you're, it's just going to be too scary for city council. I think that's my guess. Okay. Not well, I just wanted to put it out. I there. think it's a really, I think but it's a really good a idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, I'll take a break. Okay. Uh, you have a you quick, want you want a quick comment about this? Uh, a quick comment. We, we yeah. this was discussed prior to this with the city manager. Not in exactly anything, but the same idea that any civilized community has a kind of um, uh, countries that have ministries. Uh, they have a ministry of cultural affairs. If not, they have department of cultural affairs. And uh, as a hint that uh, city manager said at a given time that if there would be a good proposal, it's something to be studied. But it's a major rehash. It's a complete completely adding a new department to the departments of the city. But it is, very, rightly so, it is a very good idea. It's an excellent, because it is whatever is expected is a major step. But based on, as you said, for the time being within the given, we, this is what we are facing. So it, it was on the plate before. Um, Barbara, I just want to say it's been a pleasure to work with you and CARS um, because it's nice to, you know, we're starting to see the tangible pieces come out from all the work that you guys have put in. Um, so I had a couple questions. Um, yeah. So the first part, uh, strengthening the role of the commission, and there's a note about restructuring the committee, commission's committees. Right. Um, has there been any thought? I know one of the ideas we tossed out there was about adding youth commissioners whether they're love, GSD yeah. or GCC students. I think that's a great idea. In fact, it's sort of in the, it's, it's written into the code, but it's not um, required. And I, lo I love the idea of having young people both um, sit on the commission and also in the committees, because it's a really good way to build citizens, isn't it, yeah. you know? So yeah, I, thank you. Sure. Thank you for reminding me about that. Yeah. Thank you. And then um, also, um, you know, I think the, the third point, employ the arts to reinforce neighborhoods in downtown. Um, the equity piece is really important to me personally. Um, there are a lot of communities, especially in South Glendale. Um, the one I always think of is Pacific Community Center in that area that we should fully explore for opportunities to bring public art into neighborhoods and not just focus on downtown. Um, so that's great. Um, and I think the fourth, you know, initiating percent for art on city capital improvements projects would be a great bold statement from the city about their commitment to the art. So um, that would be great to see come to fruition. Um, and then the, the seventh point as well about maintenance on public and private is very, I mean, the, you know, as the presentation was going through, it's very exciting to see the development, uh, the improvement in public art coming to that Brand, uh, Brand Boulevard project. But that is one of the concerns. Well, what happens five, 10 years from right. now when it's not maintained? Uh, and we've seen that across the city before, and um, and then it leads to public art being removed arbitrarily. Right. Or, so um, that's a very important point. And I think you know, just like our commissioners have said, it's it just shows how much work there is to be done. 
Yeah. And um, and I think when we have the fiscal responsibility of spending five plus million dollars, you, you need it's almost you seven and a half. Exactly, and and yeah. with some of these improvements, it could be even more. And yeah. so you know we need we need staff that's going to be kind of zeroed in and focus on that. So um, you know, looking forward to the conversation we'll have with council and uh, the steps moving forward. But thank you. You're welcome, Barbara. Thank you very much for your presentation. You. I mean, you're doing an excellent job, and this is what we are, I was expecting to hear. Um, but I want to hear more. I'm asking and demanding more from you. And the reason I want to ask more, as a individual, passerby from Glendale, or a resident, I want to see how those things will go in place during time. That's yeah. part of maybe the work plan. but. If, as a commissioner, we're going to go and discuss with our city council members and ask, tell them that we have a great plan, it's going to take 10 years to implement this, and we're going to need $10 million. And $10 million is only for the first two years, and then we need to have some type of new funding methods, grants, to guarantee those programs will be continued. I might not buy it. I'm being very reasonable, and I want you to look at it from that perspective, too. Oh, yeah, I, I, as I mentioned, the, the implementation plan is going to have specific projects that should be done sh short-term, mid-term, and long-term, and it's going to have dollar amounts attached to it, and it's not going to be $10 million in one year. There <laughs> Absolutely are... Absolutely will not. What we'll be looking at is the amount of money that we have, and we'll be looking at spending that over a 10-year period. This came up in a, er, an earlier question, how long is the time period? I'm looking at 10 years. I'm looking at the amount of money that we have now and expending that over 10 years. And so it will have specific types of projects, specific locations um, or types of locations, and how much should be expended on each one of those types of things. And it will also say things like if there should be a partnership what kinds of partnerships you should be looking at. Should they be partnerships, say, for example, with the Downtown Glendale Association or with this <coughs> community or that community? The, this presentation today was really to establish the most, the high-level things, but the actual plan will have a lot more specifics because obviously you can't go advocate for something if you don't know what the something is. You're absolutely right. Yeah. May I continue? Yes. Um, also, when we talked about certain committee that you mentioned, uh, that commission appoints for different art projects. Um, I'm all for it to have more professional people or people that they are expertise in that field to be on that specific committee. Um, that includes youth or people, uh, young people under age 18 or high school kids even, or parents, uh, because <coughs> that gives us the richness of different perspective. The most important thing also I would like to mention here now is about the future of the funds. Now, all those things can be planned out. All those things can be settled in phases, phase two, phase three, five years, seven years, 10 years down the line. Most probably, the city council would love to hear a concrete steps of how the funding will guarantee those programs to function. Because without funding, those programs, they will all be frozen. So I don't know if we are the ones that we need to discuss this, uh, the, the program of those funding system, but we need to have as much as emphasis on the programs, a funding for it. And if we do have that funding for it, most probably the, the city council will understand that it's not just the programming, but there's a big funding supporting those programs seven or ten years or whatever down the line, years, years. So I don't know how much you can imp uh, include that funding system in it or if you need any more time to redo research, but that will be probably a, a good essential part of the uh, presentation while you're talking to the city council during the next meeting. Or if you mm. need our help, maybe we should I'm talk about it. Really, I'm very leery about doing that at this oh. point. And, I'll t and the reason is because they need to, I, I, I feel that it would, it's premature to begin to tell them what types of projects we're proposing. I think that we need to get their agreement 
in principle about what this what the plan what the key elements of the plan are because if uh, uh, my reasoning is this if the arts and culture commission is going to be responsible for reviewing projects and developing projects for review it's important to get the city council members to understand what the high level goals are then when the plan itself comes forward not at the work session but when the draft comes forward there will be specific projects within the plan that says these this is the recommendation these are the projects that we're recommending we begin with for each year so that we, we we're rolling it out sequentially rather than throwing everything to them at one time. Because my, my experience with this is that if you give somebody some, too much detail, they're going to yeah. focus you. on the little thing yeah. rather than the big thing. I agree with thing. you. I would agree with you. Yes. I'm just talking about the funding part of it. Well, the funding part is the Urban Art Fund. And there's sev almost $7 million in the Urban Art Fund. So everything that we're recommending is either going to come out of the Urban Art Fund or it's going to come out of this new funding source that we're recommending, which is the public percent for art. Is there any way we can add any other funding? That's what I'm, my, my intention is. Because yeah, you should urban, be asking. It can't hurt to ask, as everybody always says. No, no, other yeah. than the urban fund, the, what we have now, for example, there are millions of dollars of grants that we have not even touched those things, national or, or uh, even yes. state-wise. So that will be a department where it will be very smart right. to touch to that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, could I say something, Barbara? Um, Glendale Unified School District used to have, I don't know if they still, because it was, uh, for a time, it didn't exist any longer. Uh, we had a major grant writer who, who knew not only how to write grants, knew how to get the famous grant writers all over the United States based on uh, the grants that were available. And we were giving them a percent, a commission for writing those grants because they were the ones who were getting it, for sure. And we had a golden age at the given time because we had money flowing from all directions. So uh, a, a great professional grant writer who doesn't only write it but knows how to recruit the ones all over the states to get the money for us would be a major for source for that. That's as far as the grants to continue and that's a very uh, thing, good idea. The other issue as far as the student and the district. Also, we used to have our commission, since we are reformatting the uh, commission, we used to have for sure we had we were seven yeah. and we could have one definitely always representing the Unified School District, and the other one was from community college. Now, the person that is from uh, district or community college could not be one of the five because each uh, uh, council member appoints his or her person to be the one that politically takes care of issues here. The other two were the advisory kind, kind of, that, uh, well, uh, the, the, the district could give the name to the council and all five could decide on the name that is decided. That is, it's not one of their one person. Yeah, I was wondering the, about that. That's that's very helpful because I, yes. I, I, let, I read the municipal code and I couldn't figure out exactly <clears throat> how that worked. So thank you. Yes, so yeah. the best way would be uh, before we could have seven and then it wasn't, uh, each council member was not appointing their own. Right. But since it was the volition of the council that they would appoint their own appointee each one would have theirs. And still, we could keep the composition of seven, with one definitely suggested by the Glendale Unified School District to uh, the council that is not one of the five, but would sit there. Because we need to have a great connection with the school district. These are two major governmental buildings, uh, bodies of the uh, city. And the other one would be the youth person who would sit and would be our advocate and would give their his or her suggestions. So if you are putting the new composition, please have it as a seven, five for each council member, and one all the council would yeah. choose on. Thank you. That's so helpful. Because the way it's written now, it actually says that some of the commissioners can fall into that category. But it doesn't say how they get appointed. And so it it's a little bit odd because 
there's no way of guaranteeing you're getting somebody from that because each one is supposed to be appointed by a council member. No, that was my little tweet. Yeah, yeah, no. Because before they, it was all people were um, you know, nominating themselves or other people, yeah, okay. and the yeah. whole council were choosing all seven. Ah. Now, because the council wants to choose their own, each one of them to represent them, which is a great idea, so the five would represent the council, the other two would be the auxiliary that the whole uh, council would decide. Okay. That could help. We could have a nice representation for that. Thank you. That, that's yeah. really, that, that fills in a piece of history that I couldn't figure Being out. Being from the olden times, the only one here, <laughs> I need, I well, need you to know, put my two cents in. Codes are kind of like barnacles. They, things <laughs> add on to other things and you never, it's very hard to scrape away and find out how they were originated. And, and that's why, you know, I said I would definitely want to stay until this is finalized because yeah. my term is over yeah. uh, to make sure that I leave my legacy by making sure that we have connect the past and the present and make the best of the situation. Uh -huh. I could say a couple of things. You still have a couple yeah, of pages. Just a couple. No, I'm not going to say everything. I She's going to send me a note. <laughs> but I do. There were a couple more things. But please go ahead, I'll, and I'll pull my thoughts together. Of course, echoing all my fellow commissioners, Barbara, we're really, really happy with the work you're doing, digging down deep and getting on the formation to put our future to work on a really solid grounding. Um, <clears throat> The idea of the cultural affairs department is like fantastic. If that if that's the only thing that happens from all this process, I think that's a win for us. Okay, so I think that's really good if we could get that going. I don't know about Arlene's idea of having a whole new department, but at least creating a cultural affairs that deals with all the arts, brand, flex space, uh, public art, the commission, they're all interconnected. Mm -hmm. I think that's a huge step forward for us. Uh, but I think we have maybe a PR, PR issue here, right? We need to sell this idea uh, to the council, to to the to Glendale, and um, I would really like to see in the presentation sort of a, even a larger vision. You know, I think we need to say, what are we doing as a body to bring Glendale art forward? You know, I've always my uh, my articulation has been to make Glendale a regional art center, right? So all these all these details, all these the scaffolding that creates that. But what is the whole overall vision is, I've always said, it's like to create, to, be, to make Glendale in a unique way, in its own kind of identity, a regional art center where people will come to Glendale and say, oh, let's go see this and that. So that kind of, I think we need to strategize on how to make that a point, not the way I articulate, I think we need to find the articulation that's gonna sell this idea. Sell, quote unquote, sell. Make it palatable, make it, exciting for people to say, oh, you know, you know what, if we follow Barbara's plan, we're gonna get this for Glendale. This kind of thing, I think, is kind of really important. The say, say more, because what, I mean, I, I, I hear what you're saying, and um, I think that what I'm hearing is that to make Glendale a regional arts center, you need to be able to begin to sort of articulate what that means in terms of what the culture of Glendale is, right? So what do you see as being the thing that would bring people specifically to Glendale as opposed to some other part of LA? Well, I think the kind of art that we will eventually have here, and so one of the things that could be um, is, you know, for instance, the images that you have in your presentation, they're all from what art that already exists. How about images of things that, that could happen. A lot of the images um, that you had in your original presentation with tech art, interactive yeah. art, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that people, when they see it and they say, oh, you know what? Well, if we had this in Glendale, it would be like amazing. You know, my kids would, mm -hmm. would like it. You know, um, nobody even knows, I think, about the chess park anymore. It's like right. every time I walk past there, it's like, I don't know, it's closed off or. I think it is closed off. Yeah, or something. So. But so yeah, showing images of, of, of I think the that aspirational images. Yeah, yeah, I think that would really help in terms of creating. I, I don't. I don't know the answer to your question. That's what I have to say, right? Yeah. I don't know what it means to say the Glendale become a regional art center, but uh, art center, I guess. Yeah, but I think we have to start thinking in that direction, such that we get people on board saying, "Yes, we can do something in this direction and create our own kind of identity," and we have a vision. I, you know, I think, change, so, sorry, sorry, so, okay. 
changing some of those images could help, yeah, I think. Sure. Yeah. That would look to the future, to possibility, to potential, art, art things that could happen mm -hmm. here. Yes. Well, I've been involved, like our, or many our like commissioners, many different art programs. In order to make things visible and more people to be attracted to, you create space. And that space is art. And that art takes time to attract people. Many art schools, many uh, uh, theater companies, they create space first, and that space creates art. It could be park, it could be open space, it could be building, it could be anything. Uh, many art programs around the world, not necessarily just in LA or uh, US, they create the school first, and the school becomes the art program of the city, and then to the state, and then maybe nation. So if we are looking of a advance of any technology being art, we need to create the, sp uh, the, the space for it. Uh -huh. And then uh, that starts, that will be the, uh, the stone where you can, or the base, you can build the building on it. Um, and uh, yes, it's a vision, but it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to happen over a lot of- 10 years. 10 years, yes, exactly, or more. But the uh, uh, art center in Pasadena didn't happen overnight. People had vision, and then some artists put it together. They created the space, and now it's one of the leading schools. Uh, I'm, we're not competing with that, but again, it's, it's the space. It's the space. Uh, can I add on? Um, well, I see it in a little bit different. I mean, yes, the space is the most important, but so far in this city, from what I've noticed, what brings other people to our city has been one majorly the Glendale Arts, that is Alex Theater, with having excellent performances, uh, well-known artists, and culturally diverse groups of people. So people, to, to come and see that, they come to Glendale, and I hear it in classical station, in different whatever medias that uh, this is being presented. We need something, if that is space, that is important. So that is major. The other one is Brand Library. That is art exhibits, also brings people from elsewhere to come and see. But I don't see much more of others happening here, number one. Number two, I, might, I see this a little bit as far as with money in it. That means whatever has to do with the business of art brings people in. And I've said that many, many times. Like an art expo, something that people from elsewhere, there would be something happening annually in the city of Glendale, that people who are both for visual arts, for music, for also for makeup, for fashion, you know, things that is related to art and people are willing to come and make contracts or buy or sell or negotiate is also something that brings people elsewhere. Because otherwise it is not easy to have a famous musician or uh, opera singer or dancer or comedian and etc. come to Glendale. That involves a lot of money. But if there is business, all the business people will come for the art. And it would be something new, which I don't know if it is happening elsewhere. We could have it here, so annually we'll prepare. So all the stores, all the artists, they could have, all the galleries could have their exhibits, you know. It would bring people who are not residing in Glendale, because we are saturated. We are in Glendale, we, any exhibit we put, 90% our own artists come and see it. I don't see people who are the buyers are there. Very, very few. So if we want to promote, not only is for our <coughs> own personal pleasure of what we'll see in City of Glenda, if we want to promote it in the sense of dollar sign, we need to make sure that we help all the artists to sell their work, all the restaurants to work, all the hotels to work. So there would be more commotion related to something that is the business of art. So that is, I really would love to see. I don't know how exactly that would happen, but I do see that it is more possible for people to travel to come to Glendale, and well, it becomes a center. Can I ask a question? I mean, relative to what both of you just said, the the on the Glendale, my Glendale Public Art .org website, 
The idea that got the most support so far has been to really um, bolster and enhance the Maryland Arts and Entertainment District as a place for where people come to experience art, buy art, and all of those kinds of things. Do you, as a group, see that as being an important place to invest? Because that's what we're here. I've heard that more than any other idea, both in the one-on-one -on -one conversations that I've had and also in the, the, on the web page, that that's a place to kind of really focus attention as a, a place that people come to for art. Um, can I say something on that? Uh, Maryland is wonderful. It's heart of Glendale. It's everything is perfect. But uh, part of uh, Maryland, uh, from Broadway as you turn into Maryland, there's an organization that is a large building, a large squareage is taken for that private uh, uh, organization. And on the other end, we have the hotel that is the old hotel, and it is, so there isn't much that we can use. There's not enough space. Now, uh, I know we have that uh, movie theater area, and we have some few stores in between. So if we can juggle whatever needs to be done, it would be perfect. But as far as space-wise, I think uh, two ends of Maryland is kind of dead. So. But, uh, well, if we would have major, I heard that the movie theater, there's a major plan on that and the back of it and et cetera. So it depends how big, how magnificent something would be that would attract. Of course, I know that the movie theater on the Wilson is going to be kind of starting. That might kind of help with uh, commotion. But somehow, uh, logistically, uh, architecturally or whatever, the street, I don't, I don't, see as alive as it could be. It's so, but like it could chicken, be done. Chicken or the egg it kind is kind of, of a thing. chicken and egg. Yeah, because yeah. one block away on Brand, there's like 10 times more people walking than, than right. on Maryland. So, I don't know. I'm not really, I don't know what the answer Which to that question block? is. Do we, on Brand? I know. At Americana, there's like oh. hundreds of people. What? Just like you can't, you, you can't walk without That's running right. into this. It looks like New York City, and then Maryland is like Glendale. And so, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, and and so do, you, do we invest? It's another I guess, potential, but that's like 25 years away. Right, so do you invest in that space to, to draw people? And is that, that's risky, right? Yes. Um, yeah, I'll, I think that's certainly an underutilized, underappreciated space. There's the potential, like I think we all believe, but where does economic development come into the picture here because we're talking about things that aren't necessarily to create more art and artistic incite, excitement and attract people who are interested in the arts. They want to go to places that are attractive and inviting. And we all who went on the tour at the open house right. of that area realized, um, you know, quite frankly, that it, it was kind of dingy. And we were right, actually we looking at tables and chairs and lighting uh, wound around the trees that looked like it had been purchased secondhand. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking about, you know, public works, the economic development apartment, department, and everybody making a concerted effort to recruit the kinds of businesses and arts enterprises that we want. And I see other cities doing that. But it doesn't seem, it's not visible. If we're doing it, it's not visible to me. Like mm -hmm. going out and seeking out, you know, certain quality of restaurants, certain artistically bent businesses. Do we do that now, anywhere in the city of Glendale? Does the Economic Development Department, is there still an Economic Development Department? <laughs> they, well, the person who you led know? your tour is, is, is a senior, yeah, Jennifer. A, she, Jennifer McLean is a senior okay. development officer, and, and they have an urban design plan for the Maryland Corridor. Okay. And so the, there's the real opportunity for urban art fund money to be used to leverage what they're planning to make the place look more interesting. Are and we involved this, in their planning be, at all? That's that's what we're going to do. That's, <laughs> part, that's, that's, that's what I'm asking you. <laughs> well, here, that chicken and egg. I mean, because it just, the thing it is, just it's seems come up frequently. Me. It could be a very strong partnership between um, the Urban Art Fund 
and economic development right. and there and has to be if we yeah, want to and you make could help them with the empty storefronts or help them to recruit arts related businesses you know it's like all every arts district in the country that um, came about started small you have to start someplace um, yeah. so this could be i put this to my fellow commissioner a strategy for us where we say arts and cultural commission is going to revive maryland oh that would be very you. difficult <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, the, clearly there's a lot of risk involved in that, but, but, if, we, but so if, the strategy, if we succeed in doing that, yeah, but, uh, then we chair, are, oh, like, if, if, I mean, I'm, it's if, an, as if an idea. If one third of this block and one third of this block is already gone. But the whole middle of the block? Uh, the middle block and the other side kind of, and the other part is uh, part of kind of there was a negotiation rented whatever from redevelopment plan, whatever, so they could not actually rent the place they could not utilize, just we could put certain things in the windows. So there are lots of little glitches there that we are not, you know, uh, privileged to have the information nor kind of we are aware of. So uh, that's why so in a nothing, street that there are, all the stores yeah. are planned and performed, yes, but you know, when one third and one third is, is that means two third of the street on one side is done and gone. It makes it much difficult to have all these restaurants and all these different performances and everything in that area. And right now, when we started the project, which they did, uh, you know, we get very excited when uh, 10 people are sitting on those chairs in, on Maryland and we think we have done major. But in my book, that's not, you know. So well, you it seems people don't, yeah. don't use I mean, I'm thinking of it. You know, we need a strategy, right, to move forward. We have to start something. We have to start something. So you have to say, we're going to we do this, and then we can yeah. do this, then we can do this. So it's a great advocacy it's an idea. thing for us. Especially because the, the be Armenian Museum is going to be going there, too. If you think about, you right. start at Museum of Neon Art, there are alleys, there are all these things that are not right now connected to the Maryland Corridor that are all arts related, whether it's the Chafankian Gallery or it's Mona right, or, so it's, or, or like it's the, the ACE mm -hmm. or the library. All of these things are cultural in nature and they're looking for something to weave them together. And, and if there are things the that yep. physically mm -hmm. weave them together and then through your urban art program you begin to seed that with activities, whether it's video, whether it's projection art or it's temporary art, or it's arts festivals or events, then all of a sudden you're creating a density of activities that can grow. And if it outgrows the space and there are some areas that don't fit, then you start thinking about where's the next place that you want to develop. And it might be space 134, it might be someplace else, but you've got an area where economic development is already investing money and where the comments that we're receiving from everybody is this is the place. So mm -hmm. it seems like it's a reasonable place to start. Yeah. Yet uh, we have to have in mind, one second, but yet we have to have in mind that most of the stores that are there are closing <laughs> down or those that are opening, <laughs> they're also right. shut That's down. the whole point. Get, yeah. get, our so, get new them. people yeah. in. Okay, we have 10 minutes, nine okay, minutes. Sorry. We have nine yeah. minutes left. Sean, please. Start the clock. <laughs> you, you can't, no, uh, you can't use all well, I mean, uh, You know, as someone that's been here for a long time, um, I, I think we get into a habit of believing we can control everything that's happening out there. And, and, and I just want to kind of bring us back to reality that <laughs> artists are thriving in Glendale without us. <laughs> and so, you know, we should just focus on the things we can influence and control. And I think one of the things is, is uh, as uh, Commissioner Vador said, you know, we need to be champions and advocates for anything that's art related happening in Glendale, whether that's venues or centers coming to Glendale, whether that's different programs, activities. Uh, I know we had a conversation about um, having more public events as a commission so that we have more access to the public, but also um, honoring the different artists that are doing different things in Glendale mm -hmm. so that we're acknowledging it and kind of uh, elevating um, art in Glendale and highlighting what, what's already happening. Um, and I think the, the other thing is, you know, if the city's already committed to an arts and entertainment district, then that seems to make sense to not invest everything into that one right. spot, but to do more than uh, maybe in other areas. Um, and, uh, and, and actually, I think with the development or the um, uh, art for percent, I think there is some type of kind of not requirement, but 
uh, suggestion that the majority of the funds should go in the areas that are impacted. And yes. so it makes sense that you know something right off brand is somewhere where we may want to consider. And also something small enough because the budget is so tight. Right. Uh, we shouldn't you know shoot for the moon. We, we should kind of be realistic about what we can impact. Um, and I think part of the issue is it is a bit of a chicken or an egg thing. And it's, um, you know, how do you track the right businesses to create that um, art supportive environment? Um, but I think it's also, you know, kind of shifting the city's mindset that the arts are an economic driver. It has yeah. to be thought of in an economic uh, lens. Um, and I think this is one way where we can kind of help usher that process. Because maybe right now it may be supporting the Maryland uh, corridor, but that may end up then leading to that cultural affairs department that we want five, ten years from now. Right. That's more yeah. robust. Yeah. And so it's kind of planting the seeds. Right. So, yeah. so I, you know, as one commissioner, I think it would be something we should explore, how we can actually impact this one area, at least, among all the other things. Thank you. Okay. We're done. Yes, we this discussion. But we need to find out what the plan is there. We need to be yes. informed of the details of what is being done and who are being negotiated with, and mm -hmm. then accordingly to participate in that. Arlene, you had more notes? Did you want to No, say I'm going to hand questions? out my notes. <laughs> I can't stand it anymore. But I, but I would want to say one, one more thing about what we were all just discussing. And this is, this is a little more into minutiae trivia, so we won't belabor it. But we have got to get our internet social media image and um, look and usability uh, improved. That, e even though that seems like a mechanical issue, it's really a hindrance, especially when you look at something as spectacular as the brand gallery and what they're doing, and you can't even find a standalone portal to that entity uh, anywhere. You know, yeah. bare, things are buried. So. You know, that has to be part of what, whatever it is we do to, you know, enhance our PR. We've got to struggle to correct yeah. that. Yeah, I think you've got branding on your agenda, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's very important. Yeah, independent branding. In, independence in branding. Right, right. From right. the city. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I know, because I've spent a lot of time on the website trying to find things. And <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. it's, it's, uh, it's worse yes. in other places, too, though, I can tell you that. Okay, have we tied up Barbara yet? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Are we good? Yes. So, next um, next item. No. We have a motion. To approve. Oh, we have a motion to. The draft. The draft. To approve the draft to be presented to the city council. Yes. With all the additions. Okay. So I'm going to well, I, um, with regard what's, to the additions, I think there were um, there were comments that were made, and um, I saw. Not to be informal, Barbara, I don't know your last name, but I saw Barbara making notes. Um, and so I think she can present them as um, individual comments on the part of the commissioners because I don't okay. see that you're able to, at this meeting at least, to distill everything down so that you can have very specific agreement on each recommendation. So you've made general suggestions. Um, I think what I was hearing, at least, there was some consensus on the report as it was presented. So um, your motion would be to approve the draft plan for recommendation um, and direct um, Barbara to incorporate in some way individual suggestions by the commissioners. Excellent. Very well said. So, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll adapt that as a motion. Somebody want to? Second. No, we need no. to make a motion. Oh, it's too That's long. the motion. Yeah, well, the motion. I'll move to approve the draft plan uh, and recommend for ad adoption or presentation to city council uh, and uh, for further consideration of the feedback uh, from today's meeting. Okay. Second. No, second. 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 Okay. Roll call. Commissioners Dehovanesian. Yes. Sahakian. Yes. Sharikian. Yes. Bidor. Yes. Chairperson Oshagan. Yes. Um, item six, commission staff comments. Any comments? Oh, oh. We have three minutes. Oh, God. I yeah. want to very quickly say there's a selfie museum coming on brand. Do you guys know about that? I heard about it. Sounds there's a museum of selfies that's going to open in January sometime. That'll it's going, get I'm not sure how long huh? it's going to be around, uh, but it's a temporary pop up museum, which when? is going to add to our uh, cultural landscape. And so we should. Uh, in the Central Library? 
on brand. It's a oh, selfie. Brand. It's a selfie, oh, selfie museum. museum. Museum of selfies. But I like the idea. So the, it's the presentation of rep, self representation over history, a long period of time, not just like Kim Kardashian taking a picture of herself. So we should Why not? check it out. <laughs> that's part of it. You know, that's the end. And then it starts very, very early on. So that's my quick, very quick comment. Any other quick comments? I just shout out to Kathy Horenda, who did her third holiday art installation in, um, in Adams Square and got some publicity on it. And we thank the Parks Department for their support on that. That's it. Excellent. I want to make a th thank you comment to the uh, staff, city, uh, uh, Central Library staff. They put a great uh, Christmas party together. <coughs> the yeah. food was great. The entertainment was good. <laughs> yeah. And we really enjoyed it. Good job. <laughs> I would like to say happy holidays to everyone. We had a wonderful year, very productive. We have very nice additions to our diets, to our commission. And we have Barbara, who is kind of exciting us each time with all the information she has, because no matter what, at least the idea of evaluating and hoping that we will be able to achieve it is a major step for the Art and Culture Commission and for the city of Glendale. So thank you very much for, to everyone. Happy holidays. Have a safe time and enjoy this beautiful time of the year. Any other comments? <laughs> um, next yeah, one, item, minute next agenda. one minute to go. Item seven, <laughs> written communications. <laughs> okay, written communications. There's one written communication by, from uh, Daniel Moody from Verdugo Mount Woodlands, Hollywood resident. Uh, he's saying, I'm sending this note to commend the city of Glendale for its Beyond the Box Utility Box mural program. Every time I see a utility box in our city that has been painted with a mural, it makes me smile. I love the city a little more. I'm so glad that this worthwhile program is still ongoing. Please share my feedback with the Governor Austin Commission. So, well done, Excellent. commissioners. Item eight, adjournment. Adjournment, 429. <laughs> <laughs>